The next thing you can do uh, if it's a paid app is actually market on a lot of free apps that are similar to yours. Uh, working with a lot of the different ad networks, you can actually get uh, an understanding of what the users are like and then basically try to drive a good ROI for, uh, for downloads. In terms of rankings, another thing you can do is actually do pricing adjustments. As you start to plateau in downloads on the paid side, you can actually adjust your uh, pricing downwards. So if you start at $5.99, a week later, you know, you get $4.99, and you slowly come down to $0.99, cents, and then you'll see kind of what, what it flattens out. In terms of something, uh, since you're fighting with so many other apps on the free and paid side, you have to really kind of focus on, uh, you know, how, what, is, what does it really take to get to the top 25? One of the few things you can do is actually focus on specific locations in the world. Uh, there are 88 different um, iTunes stores. Uh, maybe your application will be a hit in Germany. Um, the world, worldwide, you know, Skype is uh, the number one or two app on any given day, but it, you don't see it that often in the top 25 in the US store. Another thing you can do is actually localize your application. Um, today, um, you know, Japanese and Spanish are the, the number two, um, exactly, number three um, largest languages on, uh, for the different iTunes store. So, you know, we have publishers that have both an English version, um, they have a Spanish version, German, French, and they'll localize to kind of get that, that demographic. And that's another way you can actually boost your rankings. And, yeah, what are the numbers on this graph here? I, that's the number of applications okay. that are localized. In a specific category. So. Another technique for success is around analytics. Um, you know, understanding what the user is doing in the application. Are they using it the way that you really expected them to use it? And analytics really provides that. Um, our company provides some of the most robust analytics today. We provide you all the information that you need to really understand what the user is doing. And we give you the opportunity to kind of adjust as you're iterating that process. Um, one of the big things that sometimes developers forget to do is kind of listen to your customers and really iterate on the application. Once you put an app out there, um, your users are actually more likely to download an upgrade if they've submitted comments or if they've given you feedback. And leveraging that comments and feedback really can drive an application to really focus on your user base. Listening to the user is really important, so getting the feedback and comments is really critical to actually making a good application. <coughs> Another thing that we've noticed is good applications get a lot more downloads. Um, if you have a rating of three and a half or above, you're more likely to be in the top 250 than uh, applications that don't. And this has been proven time and time again across almost every single category. Um, every time someone actually rates your application, uh, usually it's for a negative reason on the App Store. So again, coming back to feedback and ratings is really important. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. You find that true for free apps as well? Yeah, that's true for free apps as well. It's a free app page. Um, in terms of the ad units, um, you know, another technique for success is have multiple ad units in multiple places in your application. Just don't have the same 300 by 50 in, you know, some location in the beginning or at the end. Have a 300 by 50 at the end of every level. Have a 300 by 250 at the starting of the game. You know, it'll give you a different understanding of what the users are doing, where they're converting the best, and it comes back to the performance of applications. So. You know, up here we just kind of show, you know, the 350, 350. We have, what we have is we have the interstitial page that actually jumps before you actually jump into the app store or into kind of signing up. Developers, you know, today are making, I think 350 is the most common. 350 today is actually, a, it's a very new unit, but it's actually doing very well in terms of performance. So if you're thinking about dropping in at 350, think about where you have dead space within your application and you can actually provide um, an opportunity for monetization there. Another technique that uh, you know, veterans use is uh, really having a paid version and a light version. One of the biggest things with this is uh, you can really drive a lot of conversions for a paid version, but the problem is you have to have a differentiated uh, application at the paid side. You really have to have that incentive for, to, for someone to kind of go and go and download the paid version. Games have done this very well. They'll give you the first level for free. You'll play it, and uh, you know they incentivize you to go get the next 50 levels. The user's already vested in the application. They already want to move on. So you have kind of an instant sort of conversion. So it's very, very, very quick. 
Um, the light version can be ad supported, so you can actually make a lot of uh, revenues from the light version if it's a popular game. And from light to paid, um, you can almost see almost 50% of your users jumping over. So it, it's it's pretty incredible in terms of if you do light pay correctly, you can make a lot of money from not only the light version, but also from the paid version as well, driving a lot of your consumers over there. Uh, in terms of uh, developer perspective, uh, one of our publishers is Code. Um, they've done really well. They've been with us um, since they first launched the application a year ago. They've used multiple live units. Uh, they have multiple uh, you know, versions in different countries. So they have a US version, a UK version, and a Australian version. And what, what uh, Jamco does, they have an application called Gasbag, which does uh, you know, patrol station in your area. And what they also leverage was the feedback and ratings. Um, almost 85% of their users gave them feedback and comments within the application. So this is not going to iTunes, this is actually within the application. And because of our analytics, you can actually see what that user was doing and why they gave you that information. So if the application crashed, why did it really crash? If um, you know, they said they wanted a new feature, how can they, what is it that they could do to really give you a new feature? So that's kind of what Jamco did. They've been very successful, and uh, that's kind of what they've been doing. So I wanted to kind of keep it short because you know really wanted to open it up to you, the developers, and see you know what questions you guys had. Um, so that's sort of you know that's sort of our, our talk. And you know, please let me know what questions you have, and we'd be happy to answer.